Good morning students. Today we will see about the abdominal examination. Abdominal examination is a part of physical examination but for a pregnant woman it is very uncomfortable to lie in a supine position for a long period of time. So we, uh, we do the abdominal examination, we accept the abdominal examination, remaining physical examination we will do either sitting or standing. So the patient has to lie down in a supine position or performance only for a few period of time. So, the main purpose of the abdominal examination is to observe the signs of pregnancy, assess the fetal size and growth, auscultate fetal heart rate, locate fetal parts, detect any deviation from the normal. As for any procedure, we have to prepare the patient, we have to explain the patient, provide privacy and more important thing we have to ask the patient to empty the bladder because a full bladder gives sometimes give a false result and also it may it may cause discomfort for the patient when we are pressing on the abdomen so the for a physical examination abdominal examination have four step first is inspection second is palpation and auscultation inspection palpation auscultation so here the inspection, infection we have to, the first is the size of the uterus, whether the size is appropriate for the gestational age if, or if it is large for gestational age, if it is small for gestational age. Size, size usually it is in a contour, sometimes it is round in shape or void in shape. Then con in the size, shape, then the skin, if there is any skin changes, that is like is linear nigra, stria gravidarum are the common changes and also we have to look for any previous surgery scar, the patient has undergone any cesarean section or patient has any abdominal surgery. Then we have to look for the umbilicus whether it is dimbled or flat umbilicus. Then, then we have to ask, see for any fetal movements. If the fetal movements we can see at that time, we can write the fetal movements are seen. If it is not seen, so don't write fetal movements are absent. We have to ask the mother that she, whether she can feel the fetal moment. If she can feel the fetal moment, we can always write the fetal movements are appreciated by the mother. So, so and also we have to check for any bladder fullness. So these are the things we have to check during the inspection. Next is the palpation. Palpation, we divide it into four types. Four, one is the frontal palpation, two lateral palpation, pelvic palpations. So frontal palpation, the main aim of the frontal palpation is to find out what is in the fundus. Normally, the skin, the, the breech of the patient, the, the fetus will be on the fundus. And also, before we touch the patient, make sure our hands are warm. If it is cold, sometimes it may cold, it may cause the Braxton his contraction, and we may not be able to feel the fetal parts. So, means after hand washing, make the means rub the hand with each other to feel means make it warm. Then, the fundal palpation has to be done with both the hands to find out what is in the fundus, and also make sure don't use the tips of your fingers. Use the finger pads. The finger pad should be used for the frontal palpation and before going for the frontal palpations you can we have to check for the abdominal girth abdominal girth of the patient should be checked at the at around the umbilicus and it should be inches in this case it is 39 inches once the and also make sure you use the inch tape like this without any the the, the um, longer um, the metal piece is here. That one is known as the tailor's inch tape. Don't use that one. I will tell the means because when you use the frontal height, it may give a wrong information. So always use this type of inch tape for a frontal means for the, means the abdominal examination of the patient. Then means once the uh, abdominal girth is so finished, we have to just remove it without is causing any harm to the patient. Next is we have to write the I mean we have to check frontal height. Frontal height you with with your right hand press means keep one finger, two finger and we have to feel the fundus of the patient. One, two, three, four. Don't keep all four fingers together. Uh, first one if it accommodate one then two then three then four. So uh, four fingers we have to keep we have to locate the fundus. Once we locate the fundus keep the ulnar side of your left hand on the uh, patient and then check the mistake the inch tape. 
it should be in centimeters and this inch tape should be on this side and we have and one should we have to locate the symphysis pubis we have to start the one one centimeter from the symphysis pubis don't use this way because when we are like means counting the frontal height like this sometimes one and two inch centimeter will be in, outside the fundus so it should not be happen so take the inch tape like this and keep it between the ring finger and little finger and do it like this so means locate the symphysis pubis so here we will get the symphysofundal height that is 20 in centimeters we have to write then take the inch tape from here and one keep one it's one more thing in your mind once you start the palpation till you finish the palpation don't take your hands off the patient's abdomen so your left hand is still here we are taking the symphysofundal height next we have means one more method of measuring the frontal height by the finger method at umbilicus it is considered that we the, the gestational age is 24 at umbilicus then we have to count how many fingers we can accommodate between the umbilicus and the little finger so we have to keep our hands like this you may ask why we can't keep it like this because if you keep like this then you can turn like that one two three four five so if you means first you keep like this and it will be diffi very difficult to change your fingers so first keep like this so here it is 24 weeks 24 plus 4 28 then 1 2 3 fingers so 28 plus 3 is 31 so this patient is approximately 31 weeks of gestational age you may ask if there is much time if suppose if it is here we can feel the frontal height then how so here this is the frontal height 24 28 then you may ask how we will fill these places so keep it like this keep your thumb up like this then one two three this you can have to practice while keeping in your hands you can practice it so this is how we check the fundal height fundal height by two method first one is by inch tape method and second one is by finger method once we finish the frontal height, our hand, our left hand is still here. We will just change this one into the frontal palpation. Use both the hands finger pads, not the fingertips. With the finger pads, palpate the fundus and see what it is. Some, if it is a soft mass, it is the bridge. If it is a hard round mass, it is the cephalic presentation. Now it is the head presenting, so buttocks will be in the lower part. So, so you have to feel what it is. So we have to palpate the fundus with both the hands once the palpation of the fundus finish we have to keep one hand left hand be here with the right hand with the same in round motion you have to palpate what is in the right means left side of the patient's abdomen you have to palpate like this and keep in mind that if you come down down like this till here then again don't back and go and do the palpation so means listen means feel carefully and palpate it palpate until your hand reaches the flank of the patient so if you finish here keep your hand over there then feel with the with the other hand you have to see the same thing we have to do so if you get a continuous mass a continuous resistance that is the spine of the fetus if you get some small pieces with a space in between some knob like structures with a place in between that is the limbs of the patient fetus so see what it is in the right side what means what is in the right side what is in the left side if the spine is in the right side the fetal limbs will be on the left side so once you finish fundal palpation and the lateral palpation both this we have done facing the patient patient head is here so we are facing the patient head we are doing done both the palpation so once we finish next is the pelvic palpation so for the pelvic palpation don't take your hands keep the hand like this then change it like this so now we are facing the feet of the patient with the feet of the patient with the immense pelvic bone we have to feel the means what is here so we if it come like this if you can feel a hard mass it is the 
head that is the cephalic presentations and see whether the head has sometimes the head may be enter inside the pelvis the engagement might have been taken place in that case our fingers will not meet together the fingers will come here and it will be a blend end so no more we can move sometimes it will be not engage head is high above above the pelvis so we can move we can, our hands both the hands will meet together the both the hands are meet together it is known as the converging of the fingers the both the hands are means fixed like this it is not going moving it is not because we have got a blend in then the fingers are diverging diverging means the fetal head has entered in the inside the pelvis and the engagement has been taken place if it is meet together that means it is the feet the engagement has not taken place so once the pelvic palpation is finished next step is to check the polygrip p a w l i k a polygrip with the head is mobile or not for that we with the left hand support the fundus of the patient and the right hand with the two fingers as it means commonly we can use the um, middle finger and thumb finger hold of the fetal head and just press it see whether it is moving or not whether it is movable or not movable means the engagement has not taken place fully so it is moving so we can write the head is balotable or moving that balotable means when the head is moving or not so this is about the and also we can see how many means if the head is feeling we can see how many fingers can accommodate between the pelvis and the fetal head if it is one finger we will write 1 by 5 if if is if we can fit five fingers we can write 5 by 5 then four fingers 4 by 5 three fingers 3 by 5 and no fingers can keep between because it is 0 by 5 that means head has fully gone inside the pelvis engagement has taken place so 1 by 0 by 5 1 by 5 and 2 by 5 that means two fingers we can keep it there in those cases engagement has taken place but three fingers four fingers we can keep then we have we can say the engagement has not taken place this is about the abdominal palpation spal so once we finish the fundal palpation lateral palpation pelvic palpation next next step is the auscultation they have to auscult the fetal heart rate so if you are using a metal pinet scope means the uh, means fetoscope means make sure we warm it because metal sometimes it will be in the ac room the fan it will be very cold if you if you keep a cold fetoscope over a patient's abdomen it will be it may cause braxton his contractions so try to use a warm fetoscope so if it is means make it warm and which side you got the fetal spine because the heart rate can be seen means heard from the fetal back only we can see so if we hear on the left side we can hear and also the engagement has taken place if the engagement has taken place in those cases it will be just below it will be below the umbilicus we may get the fhs if the engagement is not take place it may be somewhere at the at the level of umbilicus or just below so if it is engagement take place it is far below the umbilicus we may get the fhs if it is in a cephalic presentation if it is in a breech presentation of course the fetal heart sound we can we hear well above the umbilicus so means means keep the broad end of the fetoscope on the patient patient's abdomen and keep your and we can miss like this we can hear the fhs this fhs will be of a double sound so it will be around 1 that means 110 to 160 we consider as a normal so these are the four three means three steps of um, abdominal examination inspection inspection palpation and auscultation so findings the findings comes in the lie means first one is the lie lie is the lie of the fetus is the relationship between long axis of the fetus and long axis of the uterus so next we can see next we can see the findings of the abdominal palpation we have finished the palpation the first one is lie lie means the long relationship of the fetus long axis of the fetus to the long axis of the uterus this is the long axis of the 
fetus and this is the long axis of the uterus so if the fetus is like this lie like this we called it as a longitudinal lie lie is the relationship between long axis of the fetus and long axis of the uterus so if the fetus lie like this we call it as the lie is longitudinal if it is lie like this so this is the long axis and this is the long axis so it is the transverse lie if it is lie like this we call it as a transverse lie no this is a oblique lie if it is like we call it as a oblique it can be either left oblique or it can be a right oblique so the fetus is lie like this normally the lie will be longitudinal either in the cephalic presentation or in the breech presentation the lie will be longitudinal and second is attitude attitude is the relationship of the fetal head and its limbs to the trunk usually the fetus will be a flex position so the attitude will be the flexion so once only when the, the attitude is flexion the smallest diameter will be in the presenting diameter so it is a deflex head it will be very it, it may end up in a difficult delivery or sometimes the normal delivery it may not be able to possible so attitude is the relationship between fetal head and trunk in the limbs to the trunk then the third one is denominator denominator means the name to give a name that means denominator is to give a name which is the used when the referring the fetal position fetal position means when when we refer with the fetal position so in a vertex position when the head is down we call it as a occiput is the denominator when the breech presentation we call the sacrum is the denominator and the face presentation if it is the face is the presenting this is the face and the face is presenting mendem mendem on mendem will be the this is the mendem mendem will be on the presenting that means denominator so denominator means to name give a name so in a cephalic presentation occiput in a breech presentation the sacrum in a face presentation it is the mendem next is position position is the relationship between denominator to the six points on the pelvic brim we have seen in the other in the pelvic brim we have seen the pelvic brim there are sacral promontory two iliopectin means two sacroiliac joint two iliopectin eminence and symphysis pubis so the relationship of the denominator to this one is called to the six points on the maternal pelvis is known as the position if the occiput is point towards the left iliopectin eminence we call it as a loa left occipita anterior if the occiput is point towards the right iliopectin eminence we call it as roa or right occipita anterior so but in the same way if this is a sacrum it is left sacro anterior left means right sacro anterior left sacro posterior right sacro and means posterior so these are the, so uh, and means uh, position is the relationship between the denominator and the six point on the pelvis so these are the findings of a uh, admins findings of an abdominal examination lie presentation position then the denominator then fetal heart sound these are the findings of an abdominal examination so i hope you understood